Well, here we are. We're headed back to North Dakota. Uh, we got a speaking engagement, two speaking engagements, and a whole bunch of meetings. We're going to take you guys along with us. It is snowing and it's about 7 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is like negative 14 Celsius. It is cold here in Denver on our way back to Fargo. And this time I have a partner in crime. That's our plane right there. We are back in Fargo, this time with a whole crew. And I think we all agree that the late night flight in the middle of winter is a bad idea. Don't do that one again. The red eye, but it's not red. Good morning from Fargo, North Dakota. I don't have my uh, coffee in me and we had a long day, so sorry for the puffiness. I don't look all that good. Uh, but I want to share with you guys this morning here. It's just stunningly beautiful. Look at that. But it's cold out there. Very, very cold. I start today with doing a speech at uh, Startup Brew and then we have some meetings with the Economic Development Forum, the uh, Food Bank, and the Rural Grocers Association. So it is gonna be a busy day. And we're getting ready for tomorrow's big day with Grand Farm. So uh, no shortage of work, and I'm guessing that without coffee, my eyes will stay baggy, so we need to go find coffee and uh, get the day going. Co-founder, COO, and CTO of Eden Gross Systems. Jeff first gained attention with his wife with their YouTube channel, The Real Martian, where they documented their journey to design, develop, and operate an integrated food and energy production system using NASA-derived technology. Jeff has 24 years experience leading, managing, developing, motivating, and training teams. He served in the U.S. Air Force, worked in commercial retail, and hopes to one day take his food growing systems into space. Let's welcome Jeff! Good morning, everybody. My wife and I flew in last night from uh, Washington State, and you guys definitely rolled out the, the red carpet for us on this particular <laughs> visit. I was here a few weeks ago when we delivered our first system to Prairie Den uh, over at Grand Farm, and uh, it was awesome driving by last night. It was cold, it was blowing. The car wouldn't stop because it was so icy, and we just kept going through the intersection, and I was thankful that it was really late at night. But we went by Prairie Den and we saw this really bright light where our tower is at growing food right now as we speak. So if you want to go see that, you can head over to Prairie Den and check that out. But I want to kind of step back a little bit. Imagine a cold, dark night. Should be easy here. <laughs> uh, where you're maybe in an impoverished uh, neighborhood, disadvantaged. Lots of folks uh, without work, lots of empty buildings. Maybe think Detroit. And, uh, you see a light over in the darkness, this old building that you thought was abandoned. And you, you just, you're, you're curious. You go up to it and you're just drawn by it and on the outside it's kind of a really, really horrible looking building. But there's this light and you go in and you just can't help. You look in and you see inside people working, people growing food, local people, and they're generating food for their community. That's what we want to do at Eat and Grow Systems, where we want to provide sustainable food and energy independence to local communities around the world. If you look at our competitors and things that are happening in indoor ag, what they want to do is control the vertical. They want to control everything from seed to you buying it. We're like the David versus Goliath of indoor growing. We are the little guy who believes in the people. We believe decentralized food production will lead to a more secure and happy planet. We believe that you should be able to grow your own food. So what we put together at Eden is a system that allows us to bring a NASA technology to you as individuals, as families. And we are a space-based company. We're working with Space Fund, we're working with NASA, and what we want to do is be able to get the price down on these systems so that individual families can grow their own food in their home. And we've been doing it. I love that, of hearing like you've got a calling and you're just gonna do something about it. Thank you so much, Jeff. Jeff, what about you? What's a way you're celebrating lately? Uh, as a startup, we exist. <laughs> uh, it has been great. Uh, we've been, we've been, I left my full-time job about three years ago, and uh, what we started in 2021, yeah, we had two people, Bart, uh, the CEO, and myself, and uh, we've now extended our 13th job offer, uh, and uh, wow. we've raised over a million dollars, and just even being able to make payroll is really, really nice. Uh, I think everybody 
probably understands that. And uh, yeah, I mean, working with Grand Farm and being back here is probably one of our biggest things. Uh, meeting Dr. Shetty has been really amazing and, and being able to just meet people like everyone here and all that. But uh, yeah, just making payroll and existence is <laughs> pretty, pretty nice. Big win. Interested in learning more about the real Martian and why space? So I wanted to be an astronaut. I was in the Air Force. I became an aerospace engineer to do that. And unfortunately, medical issues prohibited me from being competitive in that area. So dreams changed. God re redirected me. And uh, I was working for a subsidiary at Boeing doing unmanned systems. And this whole story started, and we started building this system. And we got the system built, and we live up in the mountains of, of Washington State, so about 2,400 feet. It snows a lot. It's very cold. This cold. <laughs> uh, we have seen negative four once in 10 years. So, uh, but usually, uh, it's, it's more like it was two weeks ago. <laughs> and uh, so my neighbor at the time was a really big YouTuber, like over a million subscribers or something like that. And he, the movie The Martian had just come out. And I love that movie. I think it's really, really cool. He comes in. He's like, can I, can I record this? I mean, this building is big. It's 80 feet by 40 feet long by 22 feet tall. Had all this stuff indoors. It was snowing outside. It was blowing. We had all this bisque cleaning up and keeping everything warm. I'm in my big Carhartt suit. And I look like I'm on Mars. And he, he's like, man you look like the real Martian. And it just stuck, and that's how that came to be. But the space side of things is, if, you know, from an aerospace engineer, from an engineering perspective, if you design something that works on another planet where there's no oxygen and you have to make your own energy and it has to be self-sustainable and needs to recycle everything because it's like six months before the next rocket ship shows up, it'll work really well here on Earth. <laughs> if you take those space-based technologies, and, and I think NASA is, is starting to get really good at this, where they're starting to transition those space-based technologies into industry. Um, things like what you're doing, what we're doing, they're part of what I call the all-the-above you know, approach. Like this, this issue that we're facing, it requires all of these ideas. There's, there's no competition here. Um, the only competition is let's make sure people don't stop. So whatever we can do as far as space-based technology, crickets, anything like that, indoor growing, traditional farming, we need to do it all. And, uh, but yeah, that's the story of space and the Wow, good for you for thinking. You're thinking light years ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hyperdrive engaged. <laughs> Two inspiring stories, and Jeff is right. Thank a farmer. You guys do hard work. It is not predictable. It's always a grind. So thank you so much for what you guys are doing. I appreciate it. Hey guys, well I'm here at the uh, Great Plains Food Bank in North Dakota, Fargo. And these guys, they're doing God's work here. I mean, it's really, really impressive. They service the entire state, helping people in need, and we're talking to them about our towers and how we can get even more fresh food because, you know, right now there's not really any fresh food. Uh, so they have a lot of box goods and everything. Let me show you. This, this is just one part of the warehouse that goes all the way back there, all the way over. I don't know, it's like 100,000 or 50,000 square feet, I, I forget, they told me, but it's so big. Right now, they only have all the stored goods, the dry goods, but if they had our towers, they could be helping all these communities in need with fresh, highly nutritious vegetables. So we're hoping we can work with them, and uh, it's very, very exciting. These guys, just really impressive what they do. More to follow, but uh, this is where our heart's at, is helping people. It's why we started The Real Martian, why we started The Mission, why we started Eden. So uh, thanks for having me here at the uh, food bank, and I hope to be working with you guys. All right, it's been another amazing day here in Fargo. The people are just so welcoming and so nice to us, and they're really forward thinking and seeing what we're doing, and we're getting a lot of really good feedback, folks, really good feedback. So thank you to everybody in Fargo for um, uh, for seeing the future and being part of it. I want to show you guys, speaking of the future. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. We're learning a lot already, having the system deployed. We're learning about relative humidity. Very important thing, and the good news is we're going to be installing software watchdogs for that now uh, to help out. Uh, we had some plants dry up on us just because it's a lot drier here than we expected. Good stuff happening, though, all the way around. Now I'm on the skywalk, which in Fargo is amazingly great when it's really cold out. There's our tower. It looks great. Things are going great.
It's the big day and uh, <clears throat> really everything's going really, really well. Have some software problems, but uh, that's normal. So we're working through those, but everything else is really cool. And we got a really nice shot here. Just wanted to share it with you guys. They're actually doing a little interview over there, but there's the whole tower and everything. And it just looks really great. See the interview there. All right, so we're about 30 minutes away from the big event, and you can see behind me that things are shaping up. Oh, that's a nice tower. We have representation from over uh, 15 countries. They're going to be part of this, so it's a really big deal. Let me try to move here. I'll get you a better shot. They really do a nice job here. So lots of attendees, and then really nice AV setup. And oh, look at that tower. It's really pretty tower. The team has done a great job. Eden, you guys have been rocking it and uh, that's your work right there. The first tower fully developed by Eden, not just me, but the entire team. It looks great. It looks really, really good. Couldn't be more proud of the team and all the work that everyone's done. I'm looking forward to getting through this event and, and making more connections, but we've been on the go and rocking and rolling. Ooh. Well, without further ado, I want to welcome up our an alternative in the form of decentralized food production. You need seed, you need sunlight, air, add water, step back, and everything happens. And what Bart and I have been working on, go check out therealmartian.com and ask me later why it's called The Real Martian. <laughs> Great. This is very exciting. Uh, I think there is a whole new platform for innovation. So we like to take our core technologies. Growing plants on the International Space Station and spend a better part of my career figuring out how I could keep four people alive on a mission to move them on. Guy is the limit, if you will. Uh, there's a big push for vertical farming. And then distribute that through our partner agency network of over 200 food pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters that serve their neighbors all across our service area. Being able to take that as local as possible helps from a restaurant perspective, and it just tastes better. Absolutely. If you're off Highway 2 or if you're off of the I-94, they don't want to go there. So we now have a real issue in, in rural North Dakota of getting product to them. And maybe we'll get later, I can talk about some of the things we're working on. Well, we've made it back to Denver. Hi. And uh, we're both tired. We had a great trip and we're gonna get on the train, but I just wanted to show how big this place is. This is huge. Here we go. Just a little longer to go and we'll be home. I just saw this, how to take a picture. Da, 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 da. 